Hello, thank you for joining Asnoe University, tips on how to add a certificate of insurance. I'm gonna show you here on my test client how to add a certificate of insurance. Now it's important to know first that you have your current policy here in Epic first. You have to have your policy here in Epic and you have to have your limits of coverage on your application first. All right, it's just information will pull over. When you go to proofs of insurance, you highlight certificates, you simply add your certificate of insurance that you're looking to um, have. This is your master certificate for the year that you'll be adding in here. And you simply go into detail. So you're naming the certificate for that policy term. You can put the full term in there if you have multiple policy terms. And then you go over here on the navigation panel and you add each policy that you're looking to add. So I'm gonna add a general liability policy, the most current term, and I'm gonna call it 2020 to 21 GL. Always click default template. So therefore, when you add a new holder throughout the term, this, these limits will automatically come through. So default template would be the tip. All we did was add in the most current policy. Now we're gonna go down to work comp. So this certificate is just gonna have GL and work comp, but you can see you can go down auto, add your auto, I'll go down umbrella, add that. Um, after work comp, there's two others. So if you have professional liability or cyber liability, you can add those in that area. All right, so let's go ahead and add the work comp. And again, always click default template. And if your officers are excluded or not. So we're gonna say no. And there's my limits that came over. Now we're gonna go all the way down to holders. After you get all your policies added that you want, just go straight to holders. Each holder then will give you the option to add a description of operations, whether you wanna make them additional insured or not. And remember, we check that box templates for holder, default templates for holder. So watch what happens here when we add our holder. You just click on the little add button to add the holder. And then just say we wanna do the village of Crestwood. All right, you can see the templates that are coming through on the certificate is going to be those that I indicated. And again, we can put the holder's phone number in here. You can put the holder's fax number, but what I would recommend is that you get the email of the holder. It's just more sufficient and efficient to add a holder via email. We're gonna manually add that holder. So say we wanna add it to training at isnoa.net. That's who I wanna add it to. If I wanna add a blind copy or a carbon copy, I can do that as well. And then just say finish. So you're gonna decide who's my holder, what templates of coverage do we need on that certificate? How do I contact that holder? How am I gonna distribute this certificate to them? If I'm going to do an email, I'm going to add that in here. Now, the, under description of operations, this is where you can enter that the additional insured wording. If I can type. And if you got that approved by your company, right? You can't just name somebody additional insured. If you need to put all special wording on here, always make sure your underwriter approved it. If they approve it, go ahead then and add it there. If you need to add a document to this, you can add existing documents or existing files. So you can grab a file from your desktop or grab a file from your customer's attachment here. And then holder details. This is where you're gonna see that little 
checkbox next to GL if there's an additional insured or waiver of subrogation. And again, you're not going to indicate these unless you had approval from the carrier. Now you can close that certificate. And I just wanted you to note, here is your master cert. We added the policies that we want on that cert. From this point on, if I need to add holders throughout the policy term, I can just simply come in here and keep clicking add, 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 add. You can even import holders if you have quite a few of them. All right, so let's go ahead and issue this certificate. So we go to actions and issue that certificate. And again, you can put more or less information on there, whatever is needed. You don't want to put additional insured wording if it's not requested or asked for. In the distrib uh, distribute area, it's going to say, who are we distributing it to? Your, your client's always going to get a copy of any certificates that you issue. And whatever, if we have an email for the client, that's where it's going to go. And I'm actually going to put a real email in here so you can see it go. And then the certificate holder is going to get a copy exactly how we chose to distribute via. Remember, distribute via email, and we added that as Noah, uh, training at asnoah.net email in there. Your signature will also come through on the, on the certificate as well. The signatures are scanned into the system, and there should be, it should be therefore on file. You can indicate who the um, producer is as well, and then who to contact in the event of a certificate holder wants to contact. So again, if you uncheck the holder and you preview this, it's gonna be blank. You must check both the holder and the insured. You have an option of not sending that via uh, issue without distributing or print it and mail it. Don't know why anybody would want to do that anymore, but there may be reasons, right? So then you would also say in the body, I would just say hello and keep it very general. Keep please find attached certificate as requested. And your Outlook signature should already be set up in Epic, so you should have your Outlook signature set up in there. Always, 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 this is your tip of the day, preview your certificate before you send it out. Always preview it to confirm it looks and feels exactly how you want it. Your agency name should be here and information. So you can see we chose the um, policy, the GL policy carrier is insurer A, the, the work comp is B, and it, the insured letter will be here, and you can see additional insured, and here's the one where we chose waiver of subrogation. All my policy limits came through exactly, and my wording that I indicated came through. Now, if it's good to go, when I say finish, this is going to actually go to both. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish. Uh, sorry. One thing I forgot to tell you is when you're indicating the message here, you have an option to apply that same message to everybody that's receiving these certificates. So if you have 100 certificate holders, you already predefined the wording that you wanted them to have, you can have this simple message go to all, say finish, and voila. Not only do they go out, the same day or the same minutes that you say finish, they're automatically going to attach. And let me show you how to check that job too. And then there's your activity. That's how easy it is to issue a certificate of insurance. All right, remember we said those certificates will be attached. Here they are, attached today. The certificate, exactly how we sent it out, the email that went out, please find attached certificate as requested with the certificate attached. That's the beauty of certificates in Epic. And that's how you issue a certificate of insurance in Epic. For further training, feel free to go to 
as NOAA.com, as NOAA University for our live training, and register here for Epic Commercial Lines Assistance. Thank you for joining today and have a great day.